Well, good day, everybody. My name is Dwayne Anderson here. We're going to go ahead and uh, get started with our presentation on uh, security awareness from the management perspective. Uh, hopefully, uh, most of you are in a position of uh, at least uh, helping to guide uh, some of the future programs within your organization, uh, and maybe some of you just want to get a better understanding of what management is expecting and how that ties in. In all those cases, that'll be quite good here. Uh, we, we should be able to, uh, to, to get to both of those. So um, uh, as I may mention, my name is Dwayne Anderson. Uh, not a big deal. We don't have a whole lot of time for me to spend on, on introduction here because in typical Dwayne fashion, I have more material than I'm going to get through. At least I expect that's the case. Uh, I would like to let you guys know that uh, we're, we're looking forward to having questions throughout. Um, I would prefer that you guys go ahead and pop the questions in the chat uh, chat box uh, in the conversation room. Uh, and uh, uh, Kathleen and Shannon and maybe Suzanne even will help out monitoring and making sure that uh, I don't miss anything there. Uh, and uh, without, I guess with that, uh, we'll just go ahead and get, get right into this. So we're, we're, we're intending on making sure that we have a better understanding of why this uh, is, is important. And, and um, uh, there's going to be a lot of different areas along this lines. Uh, and, and yes, of course, we're going to point out that we do have to meet some regulations. Uh, we're going to spend a little bit of time on a few standards out there. But what I want to focus on is, is this component here. Um, I don't I don't care. This is just me personally speaking. I don't care that you're legally required to do this. Uh, um, what I care is is that you are doing this from a business perspective in that it actually makes financial sense uh, and produces results that are going to uh, well, that, that are going to end up uh, end up making sure that as an organization, uh, you guys are going to be financially ahead of the game instead of uh, instead of going backwards. We'll spend a fair bit of time here on the end user risk, then finish up with this benefits of building a cybersecurity awareness culture, uh, a cybersecurity culture, which I think is a really cool term uh, and would recommend that. So. Why care? Notice that in the underlying component there, I actually popped in due diligence, right? Uh, are, are we actually doing our part to understand the risks associated with not performing security awareness, of not making sure our employees have a proper understanding? Uh, in, in other words, in other words, in other words, are we actually detecting those items that are important to us as an organization, regardless of where the importance comes from. And then do care, are we doing something to correct those uh, potential risks? Uh, and, uh, and, and this is one of those examples with regards to security awareness training. So why we care, right? So I just real briefly threw in a couple of components. And, and one of them um, happens to be some of the standards that, that a global global organizations may choose to follow. Um, just last week, I was in Germany uh, doing uh, some work with uh, uh, one of the European Union offices uh, there in Germany, and uh, I was surprised to find out find out that their CSO actually uh, prefers to use the NIST 800 standards in order to help guide them on what they should or shouldn't do. And the reason they're using the NIST 800 standards rather than like, for example, the ISO 27001 is because they're more detailed. Uh, they, they are easier to follow because there's there's more detail in them and, and there's not as much variation. Uh, and you know, a company can be ISO certified and not even be close to being secure, not even be close to, to, to minimizing risk, but yet be ISO certified because there is so much freedom uh, within within that architecture, within that framework, which is perfectly fine. I, I, there's no, I'm not, they're just different, right? So what I want you guys to get out of this is that any company uh, that is going to be certified uh, in an ISO 27000 or NIST 853, and I'm just going to go right to some cloud vendors, right? You take uh, you take Amazon Web Services, you take uh, Microsoft Azure, Microsoft Office 365, you take uh, uh, Salesforce, 
uh, which is a CRM, uh, uh, um, if you're not familiar with them, th they all st state and will provide certifications to the fact that they're maintaining ISO 27001. Well, when they say that, one of the things that I can be confident in is that they're actually performing security awareness, education, and training for all of their employees while they're employed. Now, to what level they're doing that? Yeah, that's that's where the freedom comes in. But they are doing something. That's one thing I can be confident in because they would not be able to be certified in this standard unless they were actually, you can see here, all employees of the organization and where rel relevant contractors will receive appropriate awareness education. They're going to have something in place. So that's a pretty, pretty common component. And then, of course, NIST has... Uh, an entire control domain uh, awareness and training. Uh, so, so this is not taken lightning lightly within the NIST 800 series as well. And I'm specifically talking about the NIST 853. So, if you're from healthcare, healthcare requirements, you can see here in 5I under the uh, legal uh, legal standard 164.308 administrative safeguards. We have to perform security awareness and training, uh, and and you can read all about it. Uh, if if we are working with European companies and we need to better understand their requirements around the privacy 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 regulation that um, recently came into, uh, I've got to make sure I don't mess up what I'm saying here. This has been around since 2012. Actually, before that, when they had the directive, 2012, they passed the law, but it didn't come become effective in effect until. Uh, earlier this year, I think it was March of this year. So now we're starting to see cases come forward, and and we even had a couple of lawsuits uh, uh, or a couple of fines uh, here. Uh, let's see, last month it was the end of October. A couple of fines were 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 handed out. Now GDPR uh, also states uh, in here that um, uh, awareness raising and training of staff. Uh, as it relates to handling personally identifiable information is part of that requirement as well. Sarbanes-Oxley includes, uh, you know, if you guys are, pro anybody's publicly traded, SOX includes uh, uh, awareness training, but not as you and I might think of it. Uh, what's specifically cited within the law, of course, this is going back to 2002, is the training as it pertains to when you need to have corrective actions uh, taken. So you need to make sure that people are trained. Uh, it, they, maybe they had a phishing attempt, they fell for it, and, and, uh, and, and that affected your, your guys' uh, security. Maybe data was breached, maybe it wasn't. Uh, and, and so therefore, in a corrective action, you're going to perform security awareness training in, in, order, to be, uh, in order to maintain Sarbanes-Oxley or in order to be Sarbanes-Oxley compliant. So there's, there's other, other regulations and, th and items out there as well. So we're talking about why care, and this for me, this particular component for me is probably the number one. Uh, are we actually going to reduce risk? Now, I could have went out and found a bunch of them, uh, but you know, I travel the globe, so why not use something from another country? In this case, an organization called Pensar out of the UK. Now, I'm gonna tell you that you can go find a ton of research on this, and they'll all say approximately the same thing. Uh, and notice here, security-related re re security risks are reduced by 70% when the business invests in cybersecurity training and awareness. That is a big number. If we're reducing the risk by 70%, wow, um, that is a big deal. And then, of course, I had to skip forward. 93% of cybersecurity professionals agree that humans and technology need to work together. That's pretty straightforward. On that one, 72%, okay, security awareness and training has a 72% 72, 72 chance of significantly reducing the business impact of a cyber attack. This is organizations that have kept track for more than just six months <laughs> with regards to how this uh, how this plays out long term for an organization. And and they also cite Ponemon, which has been around for a long time. And we started citing Ponemon uh, uh, figures in the early 2000s, 
early to mid 2000s. These guys have been around doing this for a long time, and they state that that your that, that an effective training program can have a sevenfold return on investment. That speaks to me. We can actually, this is not an expense. This is actually, uh, we're getting a return on investment in it. And if it's done well, sevenfold. Now we're going to talk through, uh, some, I know this is, this is an hour long, right? So we're not going to get you everything that you need to know to do a start to finish program, but we're going to get you a really good start here. And, and that's what I, that's what I want you guys to walk away with here. Notice here, most cybersecurity programs result in a 37-fold return on investment. My friends, tell me what other investment you're going to make that's going to return that type of, well, going to give you that kind of a return. That is huge, right? That is huge. All right, so why for everybody? Well, this might be why, right? So we know that our employees are our first line of defense because there is always, always, always attacks coming in. And in 2015, as an example, this is a Pentagon case from 2015. And yeah, I liked it because it was easy, easy to grab. But this is a good one, right? Out of 3,000 spam emails, how many people opened it? One. And that one, it took the Russian hacker only one hour to breach the Pentagon after that one and only one individual that opened a spam email. This is why we make sure everybody's trained. This is why we adjust training to fit each individual's different learning style, right? I, 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 people I laugh at me sometimes. It's kind of fun. I have, I do not ever deliver a training the same way every time. I don't deliver it the same way every time because those that are in the classes are different. They have different needs. Uh, and and you, I find during certain times that they think differently. So sometimes we do a lot more hands-on. Other times we just have a lot of open discussions. Sometimes it needs to be a little bit more lecture. But I try to do a good mix of those three items based upon the audience needs just because that's who who they are, right? I. I do not consider myself a professional speaker, but some companies will go out and hire professional speakers because they have that innate ability to to um, well, engage the crowd, irregardless of the different individuals that are there, right? Uh, um, uh, we as an organization went out and, and did awareness training for 14,000 plus employees of, of a global organization. And, uh, and they had us do that because of our skill set. And, you know, as a team, I did, I only did a small number of, of those. As a team, we have a really good a way of being able to engage, right? So, especially when it's in person, because, uh, you know, this isn't quite in person. So, uh, engagement's a little bit on your end. Uh, all right. So if you guys give me a bad eval, it's on you. I'm just kidding. It's not. It's on me. All right. So anyways, so what I wanted you guys to get through here and kind of understand a little bit about what's happening today. Uh, and and I'm only going to put a, speak to the big components here. I'm not going to go through and 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 give this. Uh, countless hours of time. Um, I just want you guys to get a good, a good general understanding here. So, so notice here, growth in digital devices is driving risk management. So notice here that this was, this was um, something that was put out by PwC. Um, I still call them Price Waterhouse Coopers, uh, just because that's uh, how I've always known them. But of course, that's not been the case for quite a few years because they uh, combined with another. Uh, another entity and and became uh, PwC. Uh, so so anyways, it's it's not a big deal. I've just uh, worked with them that way for a long time. All right. So <clears throat> notice here that of these respondents here, um, uh, um, sixty seven percent have an IT secure IoT security strategy in place or are currently implementing it. Now this is interesting. Why? Well, I'll give you an example. Uh, U.S. military found out that they had a major breach of of um, location. Uh, you know, they 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 have some military sites that are supposed to be well not known very well. Uh, you know, Google doesn't uh, uh, doesn't display that information. Not allowed to. You go to Google Earth, you won't see certain locations. They keep that down and try to keep it really quiet. Well. 
uh, the guys were doing their their PT and and they were using their you know nice uh, watches, maybe using an app like Strava, Strava and and um, uh, monitoring where they went. Well, they're running around the base, and guess what? That gets posted up to Strava, and they find out that oh, um, they can everybody can make out every single street that we have, and they could actually you know have an idea of where things would flow and, and the basic framework of this military institution. So they had to ban uh, those IoT devices, which of course a watch would be one. And yes, even though cell phones are a little bit more than what we think of with an IoT device, it is still, it is still, uh, especially when you get certain apps, it is still considered or falls under the IoT category. Um, even though I would prefer not to have it there, it it can definitely fit in there. So it's just good. It's just good to have an idea of where where things are coming at. So they everybody is seeing new risks tied to these emerging emerging technologies. Uh, and and why why do I why do you guys care? Why should we care? We're talking about security awareness. Why does this matter? Well, this simply matters because um, this gives us insight into the fact that. Our trainings need to be adjusted on a regular basis in order to help individuals understand, well, why did the company go to a no USB policy? Well, you need to have examples as to where that comes in and why we see that as too big of a risk to allow. Why does the company require us to download an app to get a one-time password instead of using SMS? Well, NIST regulation cites that SMS is not a trusted source because it can be too easily tampered with. Now that's just NIST saying that. That is that is the U.S. government, uh, National Information for S uh, Security Technologies, right? So e every organization is going to handle that differently. I don't care about that in particular, but I wanted you guys to just get an idea that yes, we have to we have to adjust our trainings based upon what's happening. We can't do the same thing we did five years ago all right so this this is uh, going to get into play here where uh um we since we know this emerging technologies uh at, um bear with me here a moment here there's a few of you guys that have called in that aren't muted and i'm getting a little bit of feedback Hopefully it's not affecting anybody else. All right, so uh, the emerging technologies here has related to loss of operations, loss or compromise of sensitive data. You know, this can be this can be anything from our mobile devices to. Um, <laughs> It, it, I mean, I'm not kidding you. I got a, a fellow that I worked with not too long ago uh, that uh, demonstrated for me how he can hack through a light bulb uh, uh, that's wirelessly connected, hack through a light bulb in order to uh, gain access to uh, a network. And, and those kinds of things, uh, emerging technologies, do make a little bit of a difference there. Okay. All right. So, guys, I'm not sure who's there, but we got a few of you that didn't mute, and and, uh, and quite a bit of feedback coming in here. Uh, maybe I can, maybe I can mute them. Ah, there we go. Excellent. All right, we're good to go now. So, for the rest of you guys, I apologize. I'm a little slow on being able to <laughs> uh, 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 figure out some technologies in order to get everybody muted when it was needed and necessary. That's uh, all good. All right, so we can see here cyber threats. Uh, they also affect the integrity of your data. Notice here that that is a rising concern, report of loss or damage to internal records as a result of a security incident. So, Jeez, it must have been a week ago. A um, family member received a letter from uh, a healthcare facility that had been hacked, and uh, um, ransomware uh, uh, was the culprit there. And of course, they were being ransomed, but they, in their investigation, they determined that the hacker had up to 16 hours of freedom within the entire within the network uh, to do whatever the heck they wanted to do uh, and and that just meant that because they couldn't trust the data 
and because they were concerned that data ha could have possibly uh, been uh, stolen, not only did they revert to backups, but they also had to alert all of their clients to that potential breach, even though they weren't sure if anything was or wasn't stolen. But, uh, the, you know, we talk about damage to internal records. Well, ransomware I know is a big deal, uh, and it's dropped off significantly. Um, I just want you guys to understand that, you know, we've got to train end users on this as well, because it, it, it's if somebody gets in and has the ability to encrypt your data, that means that they had the ability to steal it first. They had the, the ability to look at it. They had the ability to tamper with it. They had the ability to delete some of it, right? So there's a little bit of, uh, of, of items there that people need to think through and better understand. So when we start thinking about this end user risk trends, this is where this stuff comes from, right? Uh, employee records being compromised. I, I, um, it's a, I was over in uh, Europe. I'm not going to say where this time. And, and they were telling me that uh, just this year they had discovered that one of their former employees uh, had tampered with the records when he was being let go and, and was viewed as a work from home employee that had no manager. Uh, and so he had no accountability and he was being paid for seven years and they just now found out about it. And the guy hadn't actually performed any work because he didn't have any responsibilities. Uh, and he didn't have anybody providing oversight because he wasn't assigned to a manager. But it was something he had went in and tampered with prior to leaving the organization. So, you know, uh, that's not a bad way to earn some money, I guess. I, I wouldn't be too happy with that. <laughs> all right, so it's just kind of interesting how that all works out. Okay, so notice here, and this one, my friends, is the one that I want you guys to be thinking about. This is out of all of these we've discussed, this is the one that is a big deal for me, all right? We talk about the risk of insider threats, and this is, I know this is just one survey that went out to, I don't remember how many, uh, different companies. Uh, there were quite a few. Uh, and notice here that, that current employees are the top source of security incidents. Now, keep in mind, this is not necessarily intentional. Uh, we know that there's both unintentional and intentional incidents. But keep in mind here, 30%, they are number one. Out of all of the security risks out there, number one on the list is current employees. Okay. Now, look who's number two, former employees. Look at this. We have 58% of all incidents occurring from employees, both former and current. This is why we need to spend time on awareness training. Now, I'm going to point out one other item here. If, if there's something else that needs to be performed during the times when you're providing training, is understanding which employees just don't care. There's always going to be a small percentage of employees that just don't care. And you're, you're, I'm not saying you're going to be letting them go. I'm going to be saying that you're going to maybe push a little bit harder on them, on them or monitor them, um, making sure that you're, 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 that they are actually following the rules. I, you've got to be really careful there. Uh, don't just go out and put in extra extra monitoring. You might uh, find up find yourself in a courtroom uh, because you're doing something different for them than you are for others. Uh, we've got to treat each individual fairly, uh, accurately. Know your current laws, the local laws, I should say, because uh, um, every country, every state, every uh, in some cases, every city might have might have some different different laws pertaining to this. So be a little, be careful, but at the same time, know what you're doing. And 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 I'm telling you, when you're sitting when you're sitting down and working through uh, security training, uh, security awareness training with organizations, you can see in a heartbeat who cares, who is who is in the middle, and those that really could care less. And, and it's the ones that could care less that we need to be really, really careful with. I'm not saying they're going to do things on purpose, but if they don't care enough 
to even slow down, they're going to end up being the cause of your breach, almost guaranteed. All right, so because I'm a cloud guy, um, uh, and that doesn't mean that I have my head in the clouds, uh, that means that I've uh, over the last years, I've been focusing on virtualization and cloud uh, security. Um, I had to throw in at least one slide on this, okay? At least one slide on this. And 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 all that I want you guys got to get out of this is notice here, traditional IT environment uh, would say that, uh, so compared to your traditional IT environment, uh, they're asking the respondents, would you say the number of security breaches you experienced in your public cloud is about the same, higher. What I want you to see here, 41% of the security breaches compromised compared to on-premise have been higher. Every organization that's now moving to Office 365, every organization that's using, I don't know, Google Business or Google Apps, every organization that's using Azure, that's using an online CRM, that's using online this, online that, whatever it might be, uh, it has been clear that we have had more breaches. It has been clear we have had more breaches. And and it's not because, I, I, you guys are going to laugh at this, for the most part it's not because the cloud vendor is uh, doesn't have security in place. That's usually not it. It's usually because we haven't trained the employees to handle the difference in accessing information online versus accessing information on-prem. We haven't made the appropriate training for them, including the security components for that. That's coming back to making sure that we have security training that actually fits the needs of today. That is, that is where this all comes in. All right, so I'm moving along quite nicely. I'm, I'm, I've been talking fast, haven't I? Uh, I just want to make sure that I get through as much of this as I can. Okay, so um, the stats, non-malware attack statistics. What does that even mean? Malware, remember, is just malicious software. So yes, a virus fits into there. Um, uh, so so does, uh, uh, not a ransomware, I guess, anything that is malicious in nature that ends up getting loaded on your system. This could be some of the adware, the spyware would also be but uh, could, some of that could be considered malicious software and has a malicious intent. Now, the spyware a little bit more. I mean, I don't know, some people get really freaked out when you are, <laughs> I had an individual that was on a different computer, so it was a public computer that he was on, not logged in with any of his accounts, um, and he was looking at certain items. And then uh, he walks away, and he's at home, and he's messing around, and all of a sudden, on his phone, the items that he was looking at pops up. <laughs> and he's like, all right, now I understand why they want me to allow monitoring of my location, because uh, th this was not based upon the account. This was based on the location. That location, I was looking at these items, and now all of a sudden they're trying to sell me these items. This is terrible, right? So that, that can also be considered malicious. Now, what, why do I care about this? Well, what I want you to notice here is that there is a lot of malicious software-based attacks, but there's also a lot of non-malware attacks, which usually results in social engineering, could be external. This right here tells us how important making sure your end users understand how, where, why organizations get into your environment. They first have to lure us. They first have to convince us that they are trustworthy. And then they will be able to or may be able to get inside when we go click on uh, a, a, a website uh, that we think is legit and all of a sudden our username and password is missing. Uh, um, recently, uh, when I was on site at a facility, uh, and yes, I can't share details in this case because of NDAs. I'm, I try to be as careful as I can here, uh, but I also think it's important for you guys to hear some of the real world components, right? So on site at a facility here recently, and uh, they had a security incident where an individual's account was 
hijacked, was stolen. Now, um, at the time that I left the facility, they hadn't tracked down to know whether or not it was a phishing email attempt or whether they that individual uh, password had just been cracked um, or if that individual was using the same password at maybe they went to a forum. They hadn't tracked down exactly where it, where it had occurred yet, but the account had been hijacked. Um, and the user was made aware of it on a Tuesday or Wednesday. Don't remember which day it was for sure. He was made aware of it on a Tuesday or Wednesday. The individual ignored the email. He read it. Well, okay, according to the email software had been read. Whether he read it or not, nobody knows. He It was opened. Um, and he ignored it until Friday. And then Friday, instead of picking up a phone and making a phone call because his account had been breached, he sends an email out. And the email takes another few hours before anybody even has an opportunity to look at it. He didn't even go into the request tracking software and file an incident. He didn't follow the normal procedures that one's supposed to follow during that time frame. Uh, and, and this was an example of we're not doing enough training. Uh, and, and the individuals that were, in, that were responsible for this said it very clearly. This individual didn't spot, follow the appropriate, uh, the appropriate processes, but at the same point, we make we don't we we might do some annual training, but it's very minimal. Only what we need to. Uh, we haven't created a culture for cybersecurity awareness, and and so it was a clear issue here. And that's one of those examples. That was not a, a um, from from what they thought. And of course, like I said, they didn't know for sure. It didn't appear to be a malicious software uh, based attack. It appeared to be a social engineering attack of one way or, or the other um, uh, that of the couple of different options that I'd be mentioned of. So it's, it's just something useful to be thinking through, uh, to be planning here, right? So you guys uh, uh, must be, uh, I'm going to pretend like you guys are following really closely uh, and must not have too many questions here. I haven't seen anything come through in, in the chat yet. Uh, but like I said, feel free to ask questions if you if you would like to. So keep in mind, uh, I've always said all along, employees are the weakest link. And and there's a couple of different reasons for that. Now, my European colleagues, uh, um, not my Asian colleagues, because they work as hard as we do not. I, I pick on the Europeans like they don't work hard. They do work hard, but um, they don't work. They are not expected on average to work quite as many hours as we are, and 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 they and, and they might have a little bit less of a workload. Not necessarily. It just depends, right? What country, where you're at, uh, you know, they'll take the six weeks off. You only been with an organization for two years, and you have six weeks vacation. Now, the only reason I'm bringing this up is because. They, 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 they say very clearly that, that on, and I will state that in most of Europe, the number of breaches per organization or the number of breaches per person is a touch lower. It's not much lower, but is a little lower. And, and they say, I don't know that I agree with them, but they say it's because we are having to work so hard, we're having to push so hard that we don't slow down to double check some of these items. We just need to get our work done so we can actually, uh, um, you know, go live. Uh, and and it's one, so it's one of those things where this is as much on the company as it is on the employee. We've got to make sure there's a balance there in order for the employee to stay safe and in, and in order for the company to stay safe. We've got to, we've got to make sure that we're somewhere in, in the middle there. All right, so every organization, of course, has valuable data of some way, shape, or form. It can be sold. Just take a look at Facebook and Google and how much money they've made off of statistics. Uh, 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 you know, we're not talking about them. Well, they're not supposed to have our personally identifiable information. Uh, they're not supposed to have our healthcare information, and I'm not even going to say that they do. But what I am going to state is they, they make money on stats. They make money on advertisements. They make money on knowing and understanding who we are, what we do, where we go, things of that nature. Hackers can do some of that similar similar stuff, right? Uh, now, 75% of all small businesses are breached. So even if you're not a big company, 
<laughs> even if you're not a big company, this is still rather important uh, uh, because we all get breached. It's r really a big deal. Okay, now notice this here. Some of these, uh, just a few other stats here. 40%, only 40% of companies who suffered a major breach were able to continue operations. Now, a major breach is one that causes significant financial damage. Uh, and, 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 and that is going to vary across the board, right? You, you take a look at disaster recovery and business continuity uh, actions, and we look at a business impact analysis. One company might classify a critical business function as that which which uh, uh, brings in over 15 million. And another one might might say a critical business function is one that brings in over 10,000. Uh, it just depends upon the organization uh, and and the the average annual revenue. Uh, so when we talk about a, sig a major breach, it's one that significantly affects our revenues, our ability to earn money. And only 40% of companies could continue operations after they have received this. Now, I made mention of the GDPR, the uh, um, European Union's uh, uh, regulation on privacy, uh, privacy as it relates to companies handling individuals' personally identifiable information. And they're, um, they can fine um, up to uh, 20 million uh, per company, we're we're not talking about small amounts, right? So so the first two fines to be levied, one was a small fine, four thousand, to a small individual business that did not have the appropriate signage for a video camera that they had at their front door. They were covering too much of the sidewalk capturing individuals that were not coming into the business place, and they did not have signage warning for that. That was only 4,000. But then there was um, a healthcare institute in Spain. I think it was in Spain. Don't hold me to that. You can go look it up for yourself. Uh, that uh, was using fake accounts. They had 285 doctors on-prem with 900 and some different accounts. It was 200 and some doctors on prem with with over 900 different accounts you know i know that sometimes we have a privilege account and a general user account but even if that was the case for the doctors that would not make for 900 different accounts and uh and they ended up with a fine of 400,000 4,000 first one 400,000 for the second one and we're talking about 4% of the global revenue gross revenue we're not talking about uh, we're not talking about 4% of the profit. We're talking about 4% of the gross revenue. Some companies don't even profit 4%. And those are the companies that end up going out of business in that, in that example. And all I'm getting at is we have similar regulations as it relates to, of course, for the healthcare, uh, as it relates to handling of credit card information, uh, if we're if we're mis mis mishandling of that, and and look, I'm going to tell you guys that if you go look at the Stored Communications Act, and and uh, you take a look at, of course, that's an extension of uh, of the Bill of Rights. Uh, uh, what is it for? I think. Um, and a Stored Communications Act is about the fact that that any any of my personal information that's related to me, um, un unless I have given specific okay for you to be able to utilize that and utilize it for what you tell me you're going to, I could go to civil court and I could file a lawsuit against you, but it would be civil in nature, not criminal. Uh, but I'm telling you, this is becoming, because of GDPR, it's becoming a big thing all across the globe. And I think we're going to start seeing more and more of that. There's going to be some lawsuits that are going to be extravagant, like the, the McDonald's lawsuit related to getting coffee spilled on, on, on a lap. You know, the average person says, this is ridiculous. How can some, how can a single person get that much money from a company? Well, it, it, they got to do something that makes McDonald's hurt. Otherwise, they're not going to change their policies. So it, these things are going to come about, and and and, and well, you just watch over the next four or five years. We're going to see a few a few more of them uh, happen. Okay. 
So 60% of companies shut down their businesses within two to three years after a major attack. So 40%, only 40% can, can, can continue. This is the opposite of that, the 60%, right? Now, this one is a, a different, a different um, survey that was done. And then average losses are between 690,000 and 1 million. That's the average losses. There's a lot of companies that could not handle that, right? And this is what they're talking about, sevenfold, 37-fold. There's a return on investment when we do this correctly. Now, the last section that we're going to spend some time on um, is the benefits of building a cyber security culture. This is, uh, from my perspective, I see this as being really, really important. I, I was, I, when, when I, a colleague of mine brought my attention to uh, this, um, to this program, uh, and uh, we're we're not going to cover all of that because that's you know it the company's got to spend a lot of time doing this. Uh, but it reminded me of you know you go back into the year 2000, you know 18 years ago, and and so yeah I've been around for a little while. Uh, um, I'm 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 at least older than 18, um, <laughs> and and I lived this. It wasn't uh, it wasn't just stats that I was looking at in a history book. Okay. Uh, if you go back to around that 2000 mark, we saw a tremendous increase in the what it was costing a company due to the hacks that were occurring. I mean, it was easy to hack, and hackers were stealing a lot of information, uh, personally identifiable information, credit card information, healthcare information, company data. It was easy to do, and and we we saw an a, a, an increase that was tremendous in the average cost to a company, and a lot of that ended up being related to uh, you know people not caring about maintaining patches, uh, 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 application developers not caring about security. So we started an initiative where we at least made sure the IT people understood the value of patching systems. And over time, that improved a lot. And it really, really minimized what was happening across the globe. Now, we still have a lot of hacks happening. I don't, I'm not saying we don't, but it has improved. And, and like I always tell everybody, if you are just better than average, you're probably not going to be hacked. If you're below average, you're probably going to be hacked. Uh, and 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 then we get into application security guys, developers creating uh, apps and or, or what are applications across the board. And and we we start an initiative to change the culture within developers so that they actually care about this and they put security to a forefront. And things have improved. Uh, um, we still have, of course, we still have issues, but things have improved. And now we're at the stage where we need to get buy-in across everybody in the company. So we're at another turning point in uh, the, the, the evolution of security within organizations. And this is, this is where we're at today. Now it's not just the IT guys. It's not just the developers. It's not just management we have to get buy-in from everybody and 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 so what we're wanting to do here is if at all possible inject uh, into each individual's mind the thought process of making sure we're maintaining security throughout every task we perform every process we do uh, um, every procedure we follow, whatever it might be, right? So I felt so bad. I, I, I an individual, I was on site again um, at a financial institution. That's all the farther I'll go. And I, I felt so bad that there was an individual that during that week had two times where they clicked on attachments that had, um, uh, that had, well, they were malicious software. Uh, and they, and they ended up getting hacked, of course. And then the security operations center gets an alert, and they go down and they take care of it. And I felt so bad because this individual was having to switch computers during the time. And 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 they even had a sticky note that said, "Do not click on attachments," <laughs> right? But and I'm like, guys, why? 
why are you if 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 we're if we're having to go to that nature why don't we help this individual out and and include some kind of a technology that's going to mitigate this in other words only allow uh, uh, only allow attachments to come from a trusted source uh, uh, you guys know who you trust and who you don't let's minimize this right get get ahead of this for for certain departments you can't do that with every department but you definitely can for some and this individual just happened to be in a department where you could have mitigated it because uh, they were only working with internal staff. Uh, they did, yes, they were getting emails from external, but 90% of them, 99% of them were irrelevant. So making sure that we work through and help people think about what we're doing. Well, I, I remember sitting in and, and, and individuals asking, well, um, can I get this role added to my user account? And, and so then they go look at that and they're like, well, but if we give you that role, that means that we don't have to follow proper change management procedures because that means that you can actually not only design the change, but okay the change. Uh, and, and then you can move forward without having somebody else look over what has been done. Uh, no, we can't give you that role, right? Why, why are you asking for that? Well, I'll get my, pro get my work done faster. Uh, yeah, but that's not, we, it's not about us getting our work done faster always, sometimes it is, it's about us making sure that we maintain a, a secure posture from start to finish within the organization. Yes, some things take longer, no question about it, no question about it. But I always remind everybody, it's either it's either we buy into what the company's attempting to do, or we risk not having a job in the future. We risk the company going out of business, and I don't want to see that happen, right? So we're trying to transform security into a lifestyle is now how about that a, a secure lifestyle um, now that's a big change right uh, from an avid Facebook user to to one that now is going to have a secure lifestyle which means that you're going to be really 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 careful even if you use Facebook at all uh, and and you're going to go in and put the most restrictive sense uh, 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 items on there and and that might also reduce some of your online dating. So sorry um, in, uh, for, for, for those of you. Uh, you might want to think about some of those changes and how they, how they do affect you. And, and that would also give an example of, and by the way, when we do security awareness training for end users, one of the things that I want them to walk away with is a way for not only for them to help the company, but for them to be able to help themselves. So we give them advice, we give them examples, we we talk them through so that so that they can so that you so so that each individual can actually end up being safer at home. For example, we take pictures and we post them. But how many people actually have removed the geolocation of the picture? Uh, um, I I sat and watched um, a colleague of mine do an interview on a news station, and the interviewer, not the interviewee, the interviewee was an expert in security, the interviewer um, had not told this colleague of mine that they were having an issue with a stalker. And during the conversation, this example came up, and and the face on the individual that was doing the, the performing the interview just went pale white. I mean, pale. They now understood how the how the individual was able to find out where they live, and they realized that it was their fault that the individual figured out where they lived, and it was because of pictures they had taken at home that they had posted online and voila um, the individual had had gathered that information so these are just some of those some of those different examples right so what's going to be required you know we're, we're, we're starting to wrap this up right um, what's going to be required here uh, for uh, an appropriate security uh, culture within a cybersecurity culture within an organization first of all this must be fully supported by executives, by upper level management, it must be. And for those of you that might be executives listening in on this, I'm, I, I apologize, but I think it's important for us to 
say, say, say this. Too often in companies, executives skirt the rules faster and broader than any employee ever thought of. And it it's really dangerous because you guys are the number one um, number one uh, target. I am going to go after C-level, then I'm going to go after anybody else because you guys have access to all data. And, and it also has sent a very negative, um, well, look, if my, if, if my boss isn't willing to follow the rules, why do I have to? It's not a big deal, right? If he doesn't think it's important or she doesn't think it's important, why do I have to do it? It just doesn't send the right vibes throughout the organization. So what I'm, what I'm just sharing, guys is, and gals, is that we need to have exceptional buy-in and support from the highest levels within any organization. And I, I've gone so far within some organizations to actually have the executives be um, uh, uh, be cited as positive examples, you know, because they were paying attention to phishing emails. Here's an example of a phishing email that came in where they they were able to see that it was that it was a potential attack against them, and they alerted the security team. They followed through the appropriate incident management process, and it circumvented. Uh, a, a potential threat, you know. So, so in other words, if if we can use the executives as a positive in the examples that we cite within an organization, this is really a good thing because everybody sees that they care, and if they care, I should care. It just helps. It just helps. Of course, training and education comes into play, and making sure that we're leading the employees to 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 achieve this right. Uh, making it a positive, and there's different ways to go about doing this. And I told you guys I wouldn't have 100% wouldn't be able to cover everything 100% in depth. I'm just wanting to make sure we get a good, solid, um, uh, a solid starting point. So when we're going to create this cybersecurity culture, right, we have to first have what we're going to do. What's the concept? You know, who's responsible? Making sure that everybody understands that they are responsible. It doesn't matter who you, who you are. Um, Another individual that I worked with over the years, um, uh, he does, I, I'm not out trying to promote individuals, that's why I'm not saying certain names, right? So he's an individual that has a unique skill set when it comes to social engineering. The individual can get by with more uh, than, than I have ever been able to do. Uh, and uh, he dressed up in a nice suit, rented, uh, um, I don't know if it's a Lamborghini, but he rented a very high-end sports car, uh, and um, uh, he pretended he was one of the um, executives or presidents at a financial institution, and he come roaring in there at 11:30 midnight um, and started knocking on the door, and and he gave us the he knew when the cleaning crew was going to be there. So whenever it was, it was when the cleaning crew was there. Start pounding on the door, pounding on the door. Finally, cleaning crew individual comes to the door, and and he gives him this this story about you know I you know I was just out on a date, and and I realized as I was finishing up that I didn't have what I needed for the next day, but I didn't bring any, I didn't bring my keys or anything with me. I just need to run up to my computer and grab uh, some folders for, uh, to prepare for a meeting tomorrow morning. Can you just let me run up there quick? And he gave his name and had enough information that the cleaning crew, oh, yeah, no problem. Go ahead, run up there. Well, he, he went in and he planted some USB sticks throughout the facility to steal data. That's what he was, that's what he was really doing. Uh, and, and then he thanks them. Uh, uh, gave them gave them a tip saying thank you and they were excited they got a nice tip and voila you know the the financial institution was breached right so you just never know it doesn't it doesn't matter who you are cleaning crew on down it doesn't matter you are valuable and 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 it's important right so so security awareness programs making sure we re reward those that do the right thing you know maybe maybe individuals that have the highest um, response um, rate in that, hey, this phishing attempt come in, we go through the appropriate uh, appropriate measures, 
Um, we don't click on the links. You know, we, we reward those that are doing the right thing, uh, that notice something out of the ordinary. You know, you know, why is that individual standing around the front door? Why is this or why is that? Somebody that actually notices something um, re actually reports it. A number of years ago, I've got some new stories. I got some old stories. A number of years ago, uh, there was an organization that did a social engineering attempt, uh, um, and they were in the city of New York, and they set up on the street. Um, asking individuals to provide username and password, legitimate username and password, in exchange for a free candy bar. And, uh, and it was amazing the number of individuals that actually gave up their legitimate, because they tested it, legitimate username and password prior to getting their candy bar. Now, that's bad enough, but what was even worse is that they did this starting early in the morning, but nobody reported it to management. Nobody reported it to management until late in the afternoon. So there was like five or six hours where they were out front doing this, and executives, management didn't know. Nobody knew. It's really interesting, right? So reward people for making, uh, 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 for for bringing things to light, for sharing information, for you know I was you know I, I know I'm responsible for doing this particular procedure, but I noticed that during this procedure, there is a way to circumvent this without anybody knowing. And here's what I had here's what I had seen. The, the individuals on the ground doing the work will usually find that before somebody else will. So that's kind of some good stuff, right? Freely share. Uh, try to make it as fun as possible. There's ways to go about doing this with uh, um, uh, promoting learning in different ways, right? So uh, we know that if we get buy-in from the employee, we give them ownership on this, that, that it's most likely to be successful. Now, as I finish up, I want to point out here that all aspects of awareness and training is import important. Lecture and PowerPoint is important, but it's not enough by itself. As much as I would like to say that, it's not enough by itself. We should have some types of quiz, exams. We should have practical exercises. Uh, we can, we've also done online games. We've done in, in, in person games where we have fun stuff happening. You know, so many companies will automatically send out phishing attempts. Uh, that they have designed, making some easy, some hard. That is really important. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you guys this is what you should do. I just wanted to show you that, you know, you take, for example, this is the University of Adelaide. Yeah, they're out of Australia. It's kind of, you know, different. They've got some different security awareness games. Now they're they're online stuff, and, and some of them are not that big of a deal. But you get these, they, they give you some ideas, right, some ideas of how to go about doing uh, doing some different components. And, boy, you can have a lot of fun with this, right? I, 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 I've uh, uh, seen an organization where uh, we, we've seen uh, these escape rooms, right? So you can actually create, we can actually create games around an escape room. We have an escape room where what they have to figure out is all related to security awareness. Some easy, some hard. Uh, you're, there's a lot of things that can kind of kind of help with that. Uh, here's here's one that's kind of neat. This is called the weakest weakest link, uh, and uh, this is yes an online game, and and uh, they're going to ask uh, particular questions. So and 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 you can start your first day and notice that there's 30 days. So they skip the weekend. So every day you can come in and ask answer a question. Uh, and and by the way, it does maintain where you're at within the cookies. Uh, so so when you come back in, I had to clear my cookies to show you the day one, uh, and and it'll come back in and and uh, allow individuals to work through this. There's a lot of different ways to go about doing this, right? There's uh, uh, we at Mile Two help with this. Uh, um, any one of your training partners uh, can point you in the right direction, can help guide and direct what is needed and necessary. I just wanted to show you a few different examples. Uh, and as we're finishing up, I first want to say thanks here uh, to listening to me uh, um, continue, continue, continue. Uh, and we do have some pretty solid training here, right? I wanted to point out that uh, I recommend you guys to spend some time with some of your training partners. Uh, Directions here was kind enough to host this 
uh, to, to, to get this out to all of you. And they'll have that up on their YouTube channel. And I'm pretty sure that, uh, that we at Mile 2 will also have it up on ours. Uh, Max Training, CompuLearn of Aruba, big uh, hello to you guys. Uh, and uh, TLG Learning, these these guys can help point you in the right dir direction here. Now, I wanna I wanna just state very clearly that we do have a couple of different uh, security awareness training already in play. This is an exceptional start. One is intended for managers. Why? Because they are a different target than end users. So we include some different components. The cybersecurity culture items would be part of the management the management lectures rather than it be part of the end user lectures. Now, I, I will state very clearly that we need to do more than just that. We can help with more um, or, you, you know, at least give you ideas if you're not working with us to help create those items. But I want to be really clear, this goes beyond only the end users. We also have to you know, make sure that our network guys are up to speed. This is a security principle, so this is a beginning point for IT, right? We got hardware and operating system uh, technicians. We have executives on information security, understanding all aspects of it. We've got the techies with uh, pen testing and ethical hacking. Uh, we've got cloud security components. We've got forensics, we, on down the list, doesn't matter. What I want you guys to, to, to bear in mind so we got you covered. We got your back. Uh, and, and directions, uh, Max Training, CompuLearn, TLG, um, uh, those organizations are there to help you out as well. Uh, too many organizations see training as a cost. And, and it has, and the, the value of training has always been a return, always been a return. It's never just been a cost. You have to trust the numbers. If you're not a company that's done a lot of that, trust the numbers. Go look at your own stats. Don't take my word for it, and you'll get that. Yeah, you'll get that taken care of. So I'm just going to say thank you here. I haven't seen any questions come through, so that means that I must have explained myself really, really well <laughs> during this during this time. So I'm going to say thank you. I'm going to sign off by a voice. I'll hang out just a few minutes in case you guys do pop any questions in via the chat or conversation. So thank you very much and enjoy the Thanksgiving holiday.